Well, it's 6.20. I think we'll go ahead and just kind of start. Um, first of all, thank you all for being a part of Hometown Pride. And I don't, um, I don't know that we probably, we do have an agenda in front of you. Uh, it was all right, well, let's go ahead and approve that. It's, just, it's very loose. There's nothing really to act on. This is kind of an informational meeting. Um, one thing would be helpful if somebody would agree to take notes. We're supposed to take notes of what happens at our meetings. Any, any, anybody willing to do it? Can do it? Yeah. Cool. Um, I guess the next thing I would really say is, um, I'll kind of take financial report, but I don't know that we all even know each other. So maybe we can just yeah. kind of do a, do a brief introduction of who is what. Um, I might be the only one in the room that kind of knows everybody, but I... <laughs> I guess I was maybe one that was bugging people to do kind of this, but uh, I'm here some on city council and uh, the also on the county committee for hometown pride ended up kind of chairing that. And I'm, but I'm really kind of excited about the program and it's going to be great and do some wonderful things for town. And I'm Cricket Donovan. Um, I'm the director for the summer food program under Barb. And I've been back in SAC now for 10 years. I was born here, though. <laughs> That's it. I'm Shelly Crump. Um, I'm on the chamber board <coughs> and a few other things. Um, I was born and raised here also and just moved back three years ago. I'm, I'm sort of retired. <laughs> I do different. I'm a little part-time employee at different places. Um, I'm Kim Adams. I went to school here. I only moved as far as Lytton and came back home. So I've never went very far. I work out at the alternative school. Um, I have four little ones here in town. So it would be nice to see what can happen for our own hometown for them. So. I'm Tammy Vine. I teach at the high school down in Lakeview. Um, I was not born here, but three of the people in the room were my students at one point, <laughs> so. The stories you could tell. Uh, uh, Nothing about me, though. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm Georgia Fricks, and um, I've been hired to be your hometown pride community <coughs> coach. I, as well, was born here. Grew up here, graduated from Crestland when that was early in Yamaha. I don't know, you're probably old enough to remember that, but <laughs> I don't know if anybody else is. And here I am. I'm, I'm back here. I still am going to be living in Clarksville and coming here to work. So. I guess that makes me the senior here. <laughs> All right. Yeah, or maybe me, who knows? <laughs> <laughs> I'm older than you, Bruce. And Curtis is a professional watcher, and I'm going to share what I learned with my five to 30,000 people that are paying attention. Oh, no, depending on the day. <laughs> <laughs> so, just kind of an overview of Hometown Pride. Just um, In your packets, there's a, there are a couple sheets, but one that has, a, has kind of the red. The red stuff on top of it. This is some information we gave to the, at the county league, just kind of what was going on. It is a county-wide program. There's a county steering committee that was in charge of finding and hiring a community coach. Those people are listed here. I'm the representative from Sac City. And there's a little background here about how, uh, how we went about the process. This is basically here because of a $300,000 grant that we got from Keep Iowa Beautiful, which is really pretty cool. And over the next five years, there'll be $20,000 a year that matches from the county, the towns and the county. So we're talking about a $400,000 expense that we get to be a part of, which is really, you know, it's like we just got to go out and buy 10 new cars. It's awesome. <laughs> and um, we're a part of, now I believe there are uh, six hometown pride programs in the state of Iowa. They're listed there. Um, and 
basically hometown pride was designed to help rural communities and get them to improve. On top of the next page are just some goals that the county uh, committee came up with, some rough goals that we kind of have in mind for the county to accomplish. Our goals as a local committee don't have to necessarily coincide with those. That's one thing I just want to talk about tonight is where we kind of like to go. And <clears throat> some of these are pretty short term, some are pretty long term. And just kind of information maybe where we've been looking at at the county level. And um, one of the big ones I think is improving communication and cooperation among the cities. We've got, we all have to learn to play in the same sandbox. We need to promote kind of the existing attractions in Sac County, and you know, when one benefit, we all benefit. Hey, how's Mr. Gray? Good, how are you? Fine. Um, we did kind of a quick introduction, though. You want to tell us who you are, or what you are? What okay. Um, for those of you that don't know, my name is Brent Dre. I'm from here in Sac City. Uh, we farm, so things come up every now and then, so that's part of the reason that I wasn't here on time tonight. Otherwise, um, graduate from Iowa State University and farming for now, and uh, we'll see how long I last doing that. So. <coughs> you know, we, we, I guess we allow Iowa State people in here. Anyway. Thank you. <laughs> it's much appreciated. <laughs> and um, the only other member of our committee that isn't here is Eric Younginger, and he's out of town tonight. But um, when I could get when I could get this many of us together in one room, I really jumped on it and said, here we go. Um, as far as other kind of, uh, we're just kind of going through maybe, the county, we've established some goals at the county level. Not that we have to do the same locally. Um, improved services for the elderly. Uh, we have pretty good elderly services here, but I think that's one that uh, maybe some other towns, not that we can't do better. Um, promote parks, resources, biking, collar runs, um, improve wealth retention in the county through the use of existing or new foundations. I mean, if we look at really what is going on over the next 10 years, it's amazing how many billions of dollars will leave the state of Iowa just as, you know, it gets sold and walks out the door and it's, you know, and things that we can do to help that. Um, preserve and honor the past, U utilize four lane 20, which really applies a lot to Sac City. Beautification, that's, you know, keep Iowa beautiful likes, those kind of things going on. Um, develop tagline or logo for the county, that doesn't really apply to us, but I mean, how do we market, how do we market the county as a whole? Uh, tree planting, in fact, in City Council, we were just talking about the Emerald Ash Borer, and, you know, what are we going to do when that does hit? It's in Story County now, you know, I mean, are we going to vaccinate? Are we, what are we going to do to these trees? That's one of the things that makes Sac City beautiful, is, is, is my thought. You know, how can we preserve that? Work on goal setting, and more importantly, being the goals. I mean, I, I think every city that I've ever known has a stack of goals this high, and how many have they actually accomplished? And one of the things that Hometown Pride is really set out to do is, can we make goals accomplished? Talk is cheap. Action's hard. Um, you know, and just some other information here, just how the program was funded throughout the county. Just for your information, um, the next page of the various partners, what they do. The only thing, if you look at the bottom of, it says responsibility of various partners. Services to be provided by each partner community. We, according to the agreement, we have to have an approved community plan or commitment to establish such plan. And it gives some stuff here. That's one of the things, yeah, I know nobody wants to talk about making a plan. We'd rather do action. But I mean, part of it, part of the program is we have to figure out how we want to get there. Um, in the first year, each community will appoint a working committee in a timely manner. Well, we've got that done. So we, you know, we can check that one off the list. I, I'd like to be able to do that. And the working committee will continue on into the future if we turn the page. Not that you're here forever and can't quit. But, you know, I mean, it's, it's not the idea that this is a two months and quit. Um, provide temporary working space for the community coach when she's working here, meeting space, payment. You know, and that's 
that's basically what we've got. Now, I guess as I was looking at the agenda, I will back up number three just for information. We do have, I have secured from the SAC Development Corporation and the SAC Community Foundation seed money um, of $500 for us to use as a committee so that we, so that we're not broke. I mean, so that we do have some money that we can at least start an account with. Um, I haven't deposited yet because I really would like to have a checking account that has double signers on it. And I didn't want to set it up just for me to do it. So I've got the checks. I mean, I can set up the account and we can do it to keep our beautiful so that donations are actually tax deductible. But I guess that might be the only action we have, action item I really have for tonight is how, is, it, is somebody willing to keep track of money for the group? Is somebody willing to do that? I mean, I'd like to see at least a couple signers on a checking account, or maybe three, in case. I'm happy to be one of them, but I mean. Um, my, that's, my expertise is not in money. But, I mean, I can, I can balance a checkbook, and I can keep up with that kind of stuff, if that's what. We're not talking know. about a whole lot of influx of capital. I'm just saying that we need, I, I, okay. I, just, I just want it to be totally accountable, and I don't want it to. I don't want anybody saying, oh, gee, he did that. He wrote himself a check and what the, what's going on, you know. Well, Shelley, would anybody else willing to do that? They're all temple points. You look like you're a money man, right? <laughs> My mother is, I'm not. <laughs> but you can put me down. I mean, I can. Sure. Well, if, we, if we do three signers on our checking account, and I'll, I'll set it up and just get it, so we've got, so we have some way to at least receive donations, and if we do events, so that we can pay for them, you know, which is good. And I got, as I say, I got the seed money for that. I guess going on, looking at number six on the agenda, you know, we all come from different backgrounds. I'd just be interested in hearing kind of what you know, I, I would like us to just kind of share what our visions are for Sex City's future. What we'd like it to do. We're also talking. I am so tired. I'm really sorry. <laughs> Having four little kids does that, well, doesn't it? Well, I went from summer school to the swimming pool to ball games to you. I haven't been home yet. And we're thrilled that you're here. <laughs> so I'm, like, I'm kind of partially brain dead, to be honest with you. But, so there are programs for little kids. What do you see there being for teenagers and I don't know, but there needs to be. I mean, I, with my high school kids that I work with, I find that they get in trouble because there is nothing for them to do. So they find their own things to do, and typically they're not legal. And, and that's so, how they end up with you, right? Well, not always. But a lot of times, I'll, you know, my reminder on Fridays is to think twice and act once. And though they, a lot of times they say, well, there's not much else to do. And so it would be nice to see some activities or something for them to go do that is safe and the people that are in charge of that are accountable for your kids when they're there. Jim, what kind of programs do you, I mean you work with high school kids, what kind of programs do you think they would like? Uh, I, I mean both of you work with them, you're not that far removed from a high school kid. Teenage nightclubs. Where they only sort of pop, and, but they have music going, so they can they dance. Like the thing, you know, they like to be at the social aspect of it. They like to skateboard. Longboarding is becoming a big thing with my students. And three of them have longboards ordered, ready to go. Can I just add something real yeah. quick on that? I remember it was Laura Zimmerman's last year here as Chamber Main Street Director, and I was still in high school at the time, and we had the idea of putting, although I was going out to college, so we never really moved forward with it, but the idea was brought forth in the old Bowerville Tire parking lot to either put a miniature golf course there or a skate, longboard, whatever you call it, type right. of park. I'm not, I don't have any idea. I, don't know I just know that they're as tall, long as, as, tall yeah. as the student is. Yeah, and yeah. You could, there's enough room there. You could maybe do a little bit of both, too. I don't know. But that is something I think a lot of kids I know, even my age, although there were still things you would do that weren't legal, per se, but but still, if there were activities like miniature golf down in Lakeview, I remember when they first built that, we flocked there, and it was so fun, you know, right down the lake. You could do the same thing here at SAC, and it's not, you wouldn't have to have anybody there to actually run it. Right. You could just 
bring your own clubs, you bring your own balls, and go, you know. Right. And hopefully... It was somewhere to go. Yeah, yeah, somewhere to go, something It was do. an option, so, because yes. now, you know, we but used to hang going. out in church parking lots and socialize with our friends when I was there. They can't do that anymore. And, you know, they get in trouble for being in those parking lots. And gas is expensive. They don't just drive around anymore either. So they need something somewhere that they can hang out and go to and not be chased out of. So, I don't know. So, I mean, like, the golf, the skateboard thing that works really pretty well in the summer, you know. Mm -hmm. What would work? I, I, the thought of miniature golf in the wintertime doesn't seem appealing mm -hmm. to me, but maybe I'm a... And it's not, but... No. but I mean, I mean, three I'm, seasons of the year it is. Yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I, guess, I, guess I, was, I guess I was like, would there be something that they could do? You know, you, you mentioned like a, a, a non alcoholic nightclub or right. something. I mean, that. Um, you have to be 18 and under to get in. Oh, that would be a control piece, too. That'd probably be good, too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean. I think teenagers are just tough. You know, I see the rec center has a lot of um, programs, and I think they are really bringing a lot of kids in for yeah, different things. They are. I mean, it's huge anymore. Yes, but that's the younger ones. We're not catching, like you said. I think that teenage, um, that group, they're really what do they? And I've got one, and I'm, you know, I'm. There's so much stuff involved with school, you know, and that it's still going on, mm -hmm. you know, that which I am very happy with, that FFA goes, I mean, that's just a huge program, and, yeah. you know, I don't, it keeps a lot of kids busy during the summer, but jobs, are the kids working? They have a hard time getting jobs now. Yeah. Really do. At least do. a lot of my students, you know, they struggle to find a job, even dunking to some of the farmers. So a lot of times they don't want mm -hmm. a high school kid that might show up today or, you know, so We'll take them. I know. <laughs> honestly, <laughs> we'll honestly, we'll honestly <laughs> believe it or not, it's, I mean, there's still a lot of work that you can do in the summertime on a farm that we, you know, it's kind of hard to find kids that actually will work because they're always trying to balance it out you know, football, baseball, and whatever. And a lot of farmers you find, they will work around them, but I understand there's some you out there, too. Yeah. That mm -hmm. I, yeah, the, I know. the ones that I know. Yep. <laughs> With yeah. the exception yeah. of you. But yeah. there's, you know, a lot of mine are not active in sports mm -hmm. and other school groups, because once they get dressed, it's hard for them to go to those 7.30 meetings mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. 320 meetings, because we dismiss at 2.30. So then they're like, well, it's really hard to get a job, because you can't even work at the grocery store if you're, you know, certain calibers. So they, there's another angle. Is you have some of these kids who really aren't involved mm -hmm. in sports. And typically those kids that aren't involved in sports don't really have the support at home either. So they're looking for some community, someone that takes any interest in them. Then not just, you know, my mom and dad are busy, so he's a lone body. And you see that all the time. And so it would be nice to have somewhere or something for them. Just, I know the work training thing too would be good for them. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I know I have a lot of friends that are involved in like a big brother, big sister program or uh, or a foster grandparent. I mean, are they a little bit different? I mean, do you think a program like that would ever flourish in sex? sex? We have it. We have that. Mentoring. Oh, we had it. Yeah. And there's a mentoring program. But it's that maybe more more that's but mostly for the younger kids. Okay. And Haley, who well, graduated, kind of went to school. Oh, it kind of fizzled out then. Yeah, I, I hadn't had anyone ask about it for a while. I think it could. It could. I think you get a hit at a higher age, maybe. Then what kids you know, it's hit at lower elementary school and what mm -hmm. we had before. I mean, one study that I read not too long ago said that for every non-parental adult that a kid had a one-on-one -on -one contact their chance of success went up like 40%. Or something. Oh, I, it was unbelievable. I believe When I worked at CFR in Fort Dodge, I was the mentoring coordinator for Calvin County. And that was an incredible program there. It was called Champs. But it was, you know, we matched a lot of teachers, our teachers' associates, our people, older people in the community with the group. But 
you, there was a lot of training that went with it. So, I mean, I don't know. you got to get someone that would be committed to it. That's the problem. Right. I mean, I, I, I guess right, right now, I just, I'm just saying let's throw out, throw out ideas yep. and maybe then figure out how we can make, make them possible. You know. Right. The other idea of one in the maybe something for the winter time, and maybe this would be a winter only project, seeing as though the summer gets busy, and I realize they tried to do this a few years ago, but it just it didn't work out, is trying to open the movie theater. And I'm not saying it has to be in that spot. I'm saying you could find somewhere and put a makeshift theater for the winter and have, you know, kind of like the Lake City does, you know, it's not the n newest, best releases, but some That's newer ones for the kids that don't want to drive all the way to Carroll or Storm Lake. We used to take the nursing home be, um, residents in Lake mm -hmm. City to the movies in Lake City. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was a big thing, yeah. And the other, you know, as far as trying to find people to work, I don't know if you'd have to run it so much as a business if you put it in an existing location and you kind of made it makeshift. You could maybe have a couple volunteers from, you know, this church group or that 4-H club that comes in and, you know, makes popcorn and sells some candy for the night and you can split the profits or, you know, or something like that just to keep it going for the wintertime. That might give somebody something to do in the wintertime right. to keep you busy because that's when things kind of slow down around here and I know that's when, whenever we were in high school or coming back from college, it's when we would get really bored and find other things to do that yeah. we didn't need to do. So I know that Kyle at the community center has talked about turning one of the racquetball courts into a small movie. It really bugs the heck out of him that they've got racquetball courts that aren't used. Yeah. And he can't stand having any vacant space in his building. I caught that with his, yeah. with his boxing in the back corner of the building. Yeah, it's like, you know, there's a closet here. I wonder what I can get here to make it prop, yeah. which, which is great. Mm -hmm. But I mean, that might be an area that we could actually do something with movies. I know Kyle's talking about trying to put up a movie screen at the pool and do Friday night outdoor movies. And it's Wednesday. Uh, yeah, or Wednesday night? No. Scheduled. Okay. I mean, but is that, if we have a community center, maybe that's one thing we really need to kind of help continue to facilitate. I mean, to facilitate. So, what else? What happened to that money that was collected for the movie theater? Um, now, some of that I think was given back because I know I think my parents got checks that they'd written back. I think some of it went back. I think what didn't go back went to. I'll find out. I I, I looked it up once, and I, I it, went, it went to some organization in town. I mean, it, that money isn't there, and the chances of reopening the music movie theater now, the, the, what had been a movie theater, I think, are pretty. Kind of between slim and none in terms of it. it's now privately owned, and I don't think the pews went. I don't think that's what they're interested in. Anyway. Yeah, I think he's just using it for storage. Yeah. Well, I mean. Yeah. Though at this point, I mean, I, I don't think that. I take a lot to even make it up to code. Yeah. yeah. At this point, it's where you could have the people in it. The fire marshal would have a heyday. I shouldn't say that, sorry, that wasn't on record. But, um, <laughs> but what other, okay, that's some things for high school kids, what other kind of things would we like to see happening in town? I would like to see um, the communities, and I don't know how, and I, I'm hoping that this hometown pride, that, you know, brings us all together. So we can piggyback at, off of each other's um, events, even. You know, Lake Views got things going all the time. And if we could all coordinate, I don't know how many people would come into this area, into Sac County, if there's things just going boom, boom, boom. Or we support each other's <coughs> events, too. That right. um, would be a nice thing, I think. You know, one of my favorite cartoons. Uh, shows this boat kind of like this in the water, two people up on the top of it saying, thank God the lake isn't in our end. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and I think we have to realize that we're all in the same boat. Mm -hmm. you know, yeah, I think, you know, playing together is, so I mean, and maybe at, at the county level, I mean, I, I don't know if there's a really good 
countywide act calendar of activities. I mean, and that might be something that the county, you know, Chloe, yeah. Chloe, 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 SETD, yeah, I mean, and maybe we can. She might have something, yeah. what she's trying to get together. Or... Yeah. Okay, unity of human, what else would we like to see happening inside? I know one thing the kids would like, but I don't approve of it. <laughs> Drag <Dragon laughs> racing. <laughs> yeah. No. They'll do that without <laughs> approval. Yeah. <laughs> yes, but we can make it a safe area to do it. Yeah. Well, yeah. Um, this kind of isn't an activity per se, but one thing I think that people, whenever a new committee is thought of in this town, whether it was this one or um, the Citizens in Action, remember the first year I did that and I never heard anything after that. You know, people hear all these new committees and everybody's so excited, but nothing ever happens after a year and some of these committees and organizations I think get run together and so I think we need to have separate and distinct goals but we can work together on goals or mutual interests that we have because I think that would clear up a lot of confusion I think that would reduce our downtime if you will by a lot because there's other community organizations around at the county level and within each community that are trying to do some of the same things that we're doing here tonight or the, uh, you know, things like that. So I guess that's just one thing for future reference, and I don't know really the answer to that, but not at this point anymore. Well, we don't want to concentrate on something that another group's doing. Exactly, yeah. You know, if we can help that group, I can mm -hmm. see that. But mm -hmm. I hear what you're saying, because that happens how many times you get all these different committees trying to do the same thing instead of everybody working mm -hmm. together. And everybody trying to take credit for some, whatever happens too. So I think sometimes we get, you know, I think maybe just kind of selfless service to the committee, to the community. I mean, I don't care who gets the credit for it. Let's, you know, but let's make stuff happen. And um, yeah, I, there's nothing worse than having an organization that is designed to kind of expire because everybody loses its interest. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know like the CIA has. When are we going to have a meeting with all these other cities? Um, there is a, there is a kickoff Thursday night in Audible. I think hopefully most of you have gotten yeah. notes on that. And there's, there's a kickoff at 7 p.m. at the community center in Audible. I mean, for those of us who can make it, that would be the um, appetizers, uh, cash bar, whatever, and just and some information, a chance to get to meet some people maybe we don't know. I mean, looking at that, I'm, I don't know whether I'm brazen enough to say, please sit at a table with no one from your town. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> and I, the, it, the blood pressure in the room may just go straight up in the sky. I don't know. But I think that would be, I mean, at some point I think we do have to do some interaction with different towns. I mean, that would be kind of our kickoff thing happening. Yeah, because we need to go over all this stuff with the other towns, too, so they can put their ideas in. Well, yeah, I mean, and I think, as hometown was probably set up, it's sort of like, there's, there's an overarching county committee, but each city is kind of its own entity of its own, even though we really want them to learn to play together. I mean, maybe that might be one of the tragic flaws of the organization, I don't know, that we have to work through. But, um, I think, I... But the more I think we do have to, we do have to interact. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Are there any other things that you just think of? You know, I, if I could magically wave my wand and have sex city, this happen, what what would it, what would occur? One more thing, and then I'm done. And this yeah. isn't anything materialistic, but I look at a town like Brita, and for anybody that's gone down there, that is a town that has a lot of pride. And everybody, and I'm not saying every single homeowner down there takes pride in their property and the community as a whole, but I would venture to guess over 90% of them do. And I think a lot of people in Sac City back in one time did, but I don't know if it's just it's getting to be my generation, a little bit older, or what's going on, but there seems to be a lack of pride for the community, and that's that's probably one of the hardest, that's probably, out of everything we've talked about, that's probably the hardest thing to try and achieve, but I think that does need to be a task that 
needs to at least be brought up. So what's the name of this group now? <laughs> <laughs> well, and that's what I, that's the reason I brought it up. I got to thinking, I thought, this is the name of our committee, but this is, you know, this isn't anything materialistic at all. I see that in Manning, when I go to Manning. Exactly, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. Um, I mean, it, instilling community pride, I mean, I work with a lot of teachers, and particularly in music, and you know, it can take you years to build a good program, and it can take you three weeks to destroy one. Mm -hmm. And I think community pride is kind of that way. But I also think if we can do a few, if we can start with three or four achievable things that people are going to say, that's really cool. I don't know how many people have commented on getting lights on the stone pillars in the Chicago Park. Was it a big deal? No. There was always something that people wanted done. There was something they wanted done. And, you know, if, I think if we can take, you know, if we can come up with two or three things that we can maybe do, just... Just to draw attention. I mean, it would draw attention. And, and say, look, Hometown Pride did this. Right. Not that we have to have the credit for it, but it does give the visibility, and we can say, okay, now, would you like to jump on board? What else would you like to have happen? And I think... Yeah. I know one thing that a lot of people in this town want, because I went around and did a petition for it, was the dog park. And Adam said if I could raise $2,000, he'd start it. Well, I can't raise it by myself. That is, um, I, I take my dog to obedience. It's like two years in a row. But there, that group is huge. Uh -huh. I mean, I, it's amazing. There's 4-H kids all the way to adults, and they do talk about, I wish we had a place to let our dogs hang out. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's, it is, um, Gosh, be all over. <laughs> it is amazing how many people mm -hmm. and, you know, that do talk about that. And they cut down on the impounds, too. And people who don't go get their dogs, and they end up being put to sleep. I don't know, um, somebody talked to me about that too, you know, that you could put out that is something you have in Sac City, um, you know, where it is and make, you know, I mean, the thing is, most dog owners, even if you see them walking in town, they carry their own bags, mm -hmm. they know what's right and what's wrong, you know, they're supposed to pick that up, and that's the only thing is, you know, you've got that area, that tr they're going to throw that all in this trash, and we, you know, that would be a a daily. Yes. Particularly on days like this, out. you might want to get yeah. it out of there twice a day yeah. if they're yeah. But there is, and you can people that are traveling, and people do travel anymore with mm -hmm. with their pets. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think that's actually probably the best idea I've heard all night. Mm -hmm. uh, that's yeah. A, uh, yeah, yeah, that's huge down in the, yes. in the cities. And yeah. My sister uh, pays to get into the one in Sioux City. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. She pays an, a fee because that helps pay for the guy. Whoever cleans up after, mm -hmm. whoever yeah. the people that don't. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She takes her two Goldens mm -hmm. almost daily down the street to the dog park. Now, Adam said the only place he could think of would be down behind Lions Park. That floods. <laughs> So that wouldn't be a very good spot to talk to. And you'd have, you know, I mean, we'd have to build a fence. I mean, you don't want them. Yeah, I think, right. I mean, you know, there's how big does a dog park have to be? I'm, I'm not I'm not an animal mm -hmm. person. I mean, I don't. Well, you got three sizes. I should be able to visit large, medium, and small. Well, I haven't been there. I, next time I'm in Sioux City, I'll go down with Kelsey. Well, and I check out the one. Yeah, I, guess I think you can be creative with it, too. Yeah. I think you can start off, and and then you can get things for dogs to jump. And, I mean, mm -hmm. they do, you know. I mean, it's like a little... Playground for... Yes, yeah. yes. Playground for canines. Yeah, so, I mean, and, but that could be long-term. I mean, you can start with a place and a fence and arrange some trash pickup. I mean, that's... Agility that's training can go on huge. in there, too. Yeah, mm -hmm. but that would be... But for people traveling through on Highway 20, I honestly do believe that if they know there's mm -hmm. a place to exercise their dogs, uh -huh. 
they're going to come off of 20 and they're going to find our park and once they're here there's so much, I mean Sex City's got so much to offer you know you see the downtown the courthouse the Freedom Rock the Chautauqua Park you know it would be nice if we could do it back of the back of the end of the Chautauqua Park back there uh, the city too, would love well downtown. yeah but I mean, it's not, a, it's not impossible. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you know. So what do you like to see happen to him in the next city? They're all good ideas. Um, having something for the kids to do was something that interested me. Um, maybe some good publicity. I don't know if all the other committees have good publicity, but... You know, for example, a Sac City Pride calendar. That could be a contest. And photographers could send in, you know, a couple pictures or whatever. That we could make and sell. Or, you know, the whole community, Sac County calendar. Mm -hmm. um, Facebook page. There's a county, there's a county hometown pride Facebook page. I mean, we could link to that. We could do a local one. We could do a, we could post on the county wide one. I mean, however that works out. The county wide one has gotten some traction. So we will be doing the fundraisers too. Maybe, maybe not. I mean, yeah. Um, I'm just wondering with that picture idea with people taking pictures, if we make a calendar with the pictures from Sac City and we use it as a fundraiser, mm -hmm. possibly. I mean, if that could we be cool. need to make some money, if we, you know, I don't know it's, how long $500 is going to last. It, it won't. And, you know, yeah. and frankly, we'll probably need to look at some grant monies. We'll need to look at, I mean, some city funding, um, grant funding for beautification process, prospects probably just got a whole lot easier for Sac City. Um, I mean, Why? We, what do you mean? I'm just curious. Um, Bruce I wasn't, I'm not aware, so I just... There's, uh, because of the historic? Well, okay, I mean, the, the historic stuff will allow some things, too. Mm -hmm. um, there has... There will be, in the next weeks, a trust formed for beautification in Sac County, in Sac City. With a principal probably between five and six million dollars. Oh, smoke. John Chris. Really? I'm not saying a word. <laughs> <laughs> five or six million dollars? Yeah. Perspective. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, it, 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 the word is out on the streets. So, I mean, I, I know what this is. So, I mean, so in some ways, in the next five years, mm -hmm. if you're talking about that, you can match the money with grants. Mm -hmm. I mean, you could be talking about six, seven, eight hundred thousand dollars a year potentially. You could be spending for community beautification. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, that's there. There are many other grants. I mean, I know the county foundation grants are you know mm -hmm. those kind of things. But I mean, so I think we can probably. Afford to dream. I, mean, I don't. I don't want to spend mm -hmm. money that isn't there. Right. But we can afford to dream something. You know, calendars are great. I think that's a great idea to be able to do something like that. You know, I mean, on, I mean, you can catch some community members that are adults that want to be, you know, part of a group, but not really part of. A, you know, they yeah. just want to contribute, but they don't want to really be in a group. You can catch them that way. And that's, you know, looking at, you know, so just kind of moving on a little bit. I think also in your, um, in your packet, there's a, there's a thing called two, there's a 
table sheet has two 15 goal setting sections. This is just kind of as some established goals that the city has come up with. In Mar at the end of March, we did a goal setting session with Jeff Schott from the University of Iowa Planning Institute. And out of that, this is still in draft form somewhat. It's not, we haven't gotten the final proposal. But he takes things there for high, medium, and low priorities for what the city is coming up with. And the current one is, is a street program. I don't, that, that's going to be a city project. That's not going to be something we're going to deal with. You know, we're, we're, we're not going to put new streets in there. Um, medium, uh, medium priorities facilitate the housing development program. Housing is an issue in Sac City. It's a huge issue. I mean, as to live. far as availability or affordability or both? Yes. Both. Okay. I mean, if you are coming into town and want to rent a house, where do you go? If you're coming into town to buy a house, where do you go? Because let me tell you, it's tough. I just did it just a few years ago, and basically, you buy a house in this town, it's word of mouth. Somebody mentions to somebody they're going to, I might sell, and then it goes like that, and that's how you sell your house. Yeah. I've seen it beyond what happened to me, and that's how I got my house, you know, and it was through a real estate, but it was because he heard they're thinking about it, so what do you think? And I mean... That's how these houses are selling. And then They're you've got these houses that need so, so much work that, you know, you're not attracting some people to this area because... And then if your house is listed with an agent, they don't advertise it. I had mine listed for six months, not one showing. Mm -hmm. It was never in the paper one time. What about rental property, though? A lot of people like to rent. Mm -hmm. There's not. There's, there's yeah. not that really advertises no. besides that Glee Center clip. Yeah. And they usually get some of the, I mean, it's, they're not Gilson. really nice. Yeah, they're not very nice homes that so you'd want to. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty tough to rent, too, around here. Well, there's a house across the street from me. I don't know what's the matter with it. They move in, live there a month, and they're gone. These people that just moved in, moved in three days ago, and they're loading up to move out now. <laughs> oh dear, there's something now. Because yeah. And that's... when somebody does live there, there's never any lights on upstairs. It's always in the basement. <laughs> to answer your question, Georgia, um, rental property is kind of at a premium in town. Yeah. yeah. Um, there are, as far as apartments, there are... Two, three. Well, there, there's some apartments out here. They're in golf out here by the ball field. They're in, by, the, by the ball field, there's um, some clear out on the other edge of town. I mean, there, there are a few random apartments. There are quite a few duplexes. That's been one of the things that has been yeah, pretty good. There's a waiting house. list for those duplexes. Oh, I know but are a, they yeah. just private rentals or are they mm -hmm. a government program that you have to there meet are, certain criteria? There are a couple that are government programs in town, I believe. How much do you have that's just private rental? Just, okay. just anybody can walk up and rent. Is the high rise the one out by the trailer park? I yes. think anyone can rent that as well. I'm not sure. They're HUD too. They're HUD too. Okay, yeah. and then. There's some rent control there, I believe. Yeah. Right. And then same. the ones by Kids World are income based. But, but the one at Engels, I think, is the only one that is. What about the one at the south end of the school complex? Oh, that one's. There's some. I think, isn't there some rent control with that one? Right? The Westview like, oh, Village, West I think. Village. Yeah. I think that one, I think, has some rent control. And I think that's mostly seniors. Yeah. It is. Oh, no. As far as, far as non rent control stuff, we're hurting. I mean, there are, I mean, what, my question, what do you think for people in town? Because I obviously live out in the country, so some things I'm not as aware of. Do you think there's a bigger need for family based rentals or single person rentals? Because I know I've had some single friends that come back and they're, you know, wanting to start a job here. Or, you know, I think it's both. You need, there are the houses here, 
our older homes to find a house that's on one level uh -huh. that's like a ranch style with a double car garage, it's very tough just to find something like that. And I don't know, um, you know, are, what if you're single and you're moving in without children, you know, do you want like a duplex? I don't know. And there's one like apartment building that's totally there. vacant. Oh, that one down yeah, yeah. on Sixth Street. I mean, one one option that I think we really could look at is we have there are a lot of second stories of buildings okay. downtown yes, that have some right I mean, apartments above them. I mean, if, if you're talking about for single for single people, like the loft living might be okay. Yeah. You know? But that's that would be a facade program. They did that in Cedar Falls. I don't know how they did it, if it was all private money or not, but probably about 15 years ago or so, they a group of people got together, maybe the owners of the buildings got together, and they started renovating the lofts. And they, they were meant for single people or young couples without kids, and it was a, a, a chance at a kind of urban living in a very family-oriented community. But it was kind of more of an urban style of, of living space. But, okay, so the second medium priority, establish task force community group to investigate and promote hometown pride and spirit. I think that goes right into what Brent talked about. And we might be it. Uh, sidewalk program, that you know. Street signs improve city communication, promote youth involvement. We kind of hit the youth involvement, seems like something that we're really kind of. You can, if you picked a project, you know, there is a project that was promoted towards you, you could probably get the youth to help you with it for the most part. Mm -hmm. They'd volunteer hours to help with them if it was something that they were going to see in the end. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, that's what that one group does in Sioux City. They take the kids out to, like, seniors' homes that need to fix it up. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I know a group in the church I work at is leaving Thursday, going out to Queens, New York, and they're working with inner city housing. Mm-hmm. And they're, they'll come back and they'll have a ball with it. Now, you know, to get them, it would be harder to sell to get them to travel from Fort Dodge to Sac City. Queens seems a little more... Enticing, <laughs> yeah. but you know, uh, totally get there. <laughs> but I mean, I just think uh, some possibilities, and the rest of the pages on here are just past goal settings and kind of what what's happened, where we are with them, um, and some of them are done, some of them have, some of them have kind of gone by the wayside. Housing, I think, is has been a consideration for the last five years. You know, loss of population has been a consideration. I mean, those kind of things are all there. And the other sheets that you have, and I'll let you kind of per peruse them at the later on tonight, they're the uh, capital improvement project budgets. And just kind of, if you look at, um, Look across the years, the, the years at the top of each page, some of them are kind of small. But it talks about what is the years ahead, where, where things are actually budgeted for um, different things within the city, which sometimes our, our money does talk about where our goals are. And that's just kind of for you to peruse and look at. I like the one on here for planning for a habitat for humanity. I worked with them in Florida. Yeah, that that's a good goal. Um, I know from talking to people in habitat, we don't qualify because we don't have enough people. And we, because we don't have enough houses. No, well, <laughs> that too. But I mean, to qualify for habitat, it would almost have to be a. Um, I, I think about. A, five to six county area that would get together and do it. Because they have kind of a minimum 
number of people, and we don't. Yeah, this is tri county program. Yeah, and I, I, I've got. I mean, I've got quite a few friends that have done habitats, and, uh, and they, and I, I that it, it's a great program. I may I mean, to come up with a similar program to Habitat. Do people know what Habitat for Humanity is? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, if we could come up with a similar I program, you know, college. and help help somebody build a house, that'd be really cool. But you know. Mm-hmm. You could reconstruct some that are here. The, I'm sure that planning and zoning would love it if we were to reconstruct houses that were here. Um, <laughs> Some of them are better to be knocked down. I don't know if we're on that same page or not. <laughs> <laughs> I think we'd love to have a housing development. Mm -hmm. I think the Actually, I shouldn't speak for the whole. The bike path would be successful. That? That's on here. The yeah, a walking the bike path? Yeah. yeah. I mean, there are lots of great ideas. Mm -hmm. Part of our goal is to maybe help these things that are on a piece of paper become reality. Yeah. So, um, kind of discussion of goals for the local committee, and we're not going to come up with, I mean, my, my feeling of goals is sort of like budgets, that they're works in progress oftentimes. Yeah, what are we looking at? I know that at kind of the county level, not we have to do this, but I think that if we can get kind of a bifurcated path going on, one is, okay, we need and we need to do the planning and figure out what kind, where would we like to be five years from? Would we like to be ten years from now? I mean, and then the other one, I think we need to come up with. That's kind of the, the long road and kind of the short diversion. Can we come up with two or three things that we could accomplish by October? They might be small. They might be some. You know, it might be creating a place for movies. It might be. Uh, Working toward a dog park, it might be. I mean, that that might be a little bigger than you know something that's there. I mean, a calendar. A kind of, I mean, something that is really achievable in a short period of time, so that we can begin to say, okay, we're moving forward. You know, Matt. I think long-term goals are great, but we need some short-term things to. I think the street sign thing would be good. I'm tired of living on Bro on Bowery when I live on State. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, the street the street that's signs you know, that, <laughs> that that's something that is that already in the works to happen. I don't know that we have to grease that one. I mean, there. Um, I think we're we there's basically like a two two three year program to get the street signs pretty much replaced in town. I think we're starting with the numbered streets because those are ones that you can. You know, those are stock. You know, we first street so you know, and right now actually we're working with a company called Blue Space, which is doing uh, marketing, branding for the community, and we're waiting to figure out what color. You know, they're coming up with a color scheme and things that we should be using for the community. So before we order the signs, we want to figure out what colors are we going to be accentuating the community. Yeah. You know. Yeah, which is Brent smiles like okay, a street sign is a street sign. No, 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 I, no, I understand. That's and they should be fluorescent so you can see them at night. <laughs> I don't know about that, but they yeah. should at least be visible. Yeah. <laughs> well, they have them that are interior lit with LED lights that are solar, but I don't know that we're going to do that either. Yeah. Uh, but that's the value of that. <laughs> you know, I can see that movie thing actually to meet I don't uh -huh. see why a person cool. couldn't get that going in yeah. you know, by yes. January see, 2016. That's what I'm wondering yeah. too. I yeah. mean, especially if we're going to tap into the rec center. Mm -hmm. The only problem I can see with the rec center as far as putting them in the basketball court is if there's you know elderly people in the community that want to go see them too. Mm -hmm. Well, That's, there's an elevator in there now. Oh, there is? Yes, yes, oh, there's yes. an elevator. I thought okay, I yeah. somebody yeah. to tell me. I think it's been out of commission three or four times already, though. Since <laughs> oh, Just well, <laughs> but anyway, no, that's, but as long as but that option is available, that, months, that, so. that puts my mind at ease. And, yeah. But does yeah. the other thing go to the second floor? That's the other problem. It goes I think down. It does. I think it goes down, but I don't think it goes up. Oh, I haven't tried. Maybe I should try that out too, Brett. Yeah. <laughs> 
This is fine, just start with the I'll check it tomorrow when I'm there. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but, that's, but that yeah, is an right. issue. I, I mean, we want go. young people, obviously, mm -hmm. to go to the movie theater, but, you know, there elderly people be, might want to be a... There's a lot of them that like yeah. to go to that kind of thing. Exactly. It's something for them to do on a yeah. Friday night, too. And some of those movies, quite honestly, the older people would rather watch. Mm -hmm. you know, uh -huh. And I'm not so worried, much worried about trying to find seating and things like that because I think a person you could find, you know, there's auctions all over the place, the movie theaters closing down, things right. like that. And so what if, you know, somebody has to go on? Well, you just got a whole slew of uh, red cloth chairs. Mm -hmm. They're comfy. Yep. So I don't think. And know. I think that the basketball room would be better than the racquetball room because the racquetball room is smaller and that's right there on the main floor and I don't think he has basketball games at night. Yeah. So I mean, but anyway, that's something. Yeah, so, I mean, so maybe that's something we could maybe work with Kyle. And maybe Kyle uh -huh. has other ideas that will yeah. fit that need with a little help. So mm -hmm. I don't know what other building you could get in the Sac City that mm -hmm. would need that. I mean, I don't, I mean, the Middle school auditorium. Yeah, the middle school auditorium. Oh. Yeah. yeah. I thought that. Those seats are uncomfortable, though, when yeah, you but, sit there for that length but of time. But it would be, it's appropriate for a movie theater it type setting. Awesome. Honestly, it the is. sound system's there, and if it yeah. needs some other, that screens. could be something, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, in the screens. Yeah, because they do show movies there once in a while. Yeah, they do it for the PTA or PTO. Yeah. Or, yeah. yeah. It would just be the, trying to get a hold of an actual, you know, a movie screening. There were, you know, there's a little box on the ticket offices right there, you know, from when they used to use it years ago. That's excellent. excellent. Mm -hmm. that said that, I don't know who did it. Idea. So it, it depends on how much renovation Kyle would want to do with the rec center or if the school would even yeah. want to work with us on it. You know, you got a couple well, issues. There, there was plans to have movies there. And they, yeah, there was at one time. Yeah. And there was something, it might have been something with David Bruce and funding for them because they'd have to be the janitors after. So that might be somewhere where we can come in, you yeah. know, with the fun, you know, we Whoever's, can offer and, yeah. yeah. Maybe whichever organization or, you know, yeah. civic group is working that evening, that's also part of the thing. Right, make you sure can all plan that, it, yep. Yeah. And it wouldn't be that hard. No. I mean, it's not like it's all carpeted, you no. only have the rail. I don't think it always is. I think the... Just the rows. The aisles. Yeah. 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 The aisles. I don't it's not. Mm -hmm. you know, that's... that's an idea. That's one of the cool things, really, about town is that we do have an auditorium. Mm -hmm. You know, you know yeah. And, yeah. Um, they don't utilize it. I mean, if, when you think of like the dancery side, well, those buildings are packed. Anytime there's something to do, they are packed, just so that people get out. Mm -hmm. So I think you'd be surprised at how many people would come if you just, you know, on every third, you know, even if it's mm -hmm. once a month, you know, on the fourth Saturday or whatever, there'll be a movie. Mm -hmm. They'll make plans to either. Mm -hmm. I think so too. Okay. And that is all ages, like you said. Yeah. I mean, that's at the whole town. Just take a weekend a month and show movies. We could have popcorn too. Uh -huh. <laughs> that's the best part, right? You're just gonna throw that out. Yeah. <laughs> I got, the, I got a little connection so, there. So, what needs to be done in order to have have a movie? Well, we got to get some place to have it and have it set. And then we have to find out how we get the movies. We well, probably contact the, Lake City's Theater. That's, to ask yeah. that's our best. Because they think, like, the Pocahontas has one that's similar to Lake City's, and I'm not so sure that they don't move them through each other. Yeah. They because, like, them. yeah. Because when, after Lake City had that Cinderella, um, Pocahontas had it. And so I think that they just rotate. The movies around. So does Pocahontas have a movie theater like Lake City? Or they yeah, it's very similar. It costs the two dollars or whatever to get in, mm -hmm. and it's ran mm -hmm. by a community group, and all of it's all volunteers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One community group runs, you know, the basic idea, and then volunteers volunteer to run it, to be there. So and of course we have to have a refreshment stand. You have to have a screen. You have to have the projector and the sound system. Right. There'd be your costs in your projector and mm -hmm. things like that. Unless. And, and you have to have a studio where they can show it. If from. there's a big one there, I guess I don't. Is there? There's a projector there. I'm sure. One that would work. 
And if not, if that's the biggest, you know, if that's really the biggest hang-up, it's... So, yeah. so, so we, might have to, we might have to fundraise money for a projector. Okay, right. that, you know. um, I think you also have to have a license to do it, I believe. I think you've got to have a, I think you you have the videography yeah. license in order to project show that. But I, I don't know if you do or not. Yeah, yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. Oh. How hard is that to get would be the question. I don't it, think it's, it's that too, hard. It's not that hard. It's just, yeah. it's just, it's just, it's um, another hoop. A matter of classes or something you sit through, probably. Or no, 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 you no, just no. apply for it. You just oh, apply yes. for it. It's a license. Yes. It's like, um, it's like a tax. Tax. license. <laughs> then you is, get, it right? is it kind of like paying a tax? Well, no, it's, it's the way that you pay royalties yeah, to the people to who the, own the rights to the movie. Oh, got it. Yeah, it's, it's just like right. it's like having a um, like like for a bar to play music, they have to have a what's the what's the it's a jukebox that's hooked up to yeah. it. Yeah. And you have to have a health certificate, which under the school we would fall under the school under the rec center we'd fall under the rec center's health certificate. Okay. So. You know, yeah, so, it all makes sense. do we want, you know, would someone be willing to talk to Kyle? Would someone be willing to talk to a school system about... Well, I can talk to Kyle tomorrow. Okay. I see him every day, so... I think I know a teacher, maybe, that... Kim? Maybe <laughs> <laughs> I don't work in middle school, but... Well, either, either one, either one. I would like to talk to you. I'd say Barb first. <laughs> Um, Barb's kind of scary, but <laughs> I can take Tammy with me. Yeah. <laughs> you can, we'll talk to Barb. Go we'll go together. Yes. Okay. Yes. So, I mean, so if we can get, you know, I'm joking. And, 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 and it's like there's no way that we would allow that to happen. You know, I mean, yeah. I'm sure with their issues of building security and that kind of stuff, you know, because they don't want people running throughout the whole building when it's there. You've got to have at least access to a restroom somehow when it's there. I mean, it's. Those screens that on the middle school. Yeah, that's what. Seems like they used to be able to block that. Yeah. Well, oh, there's one. So you can't go into the principal's office and down that right hallway. But that would be some of the volunteer. They can just stand because there's a bathroom at the bottom of the stairs. You know, that would not block. There's men and women there. So you could just you know have someone that kind of watches the one hallway and the other hallway. They would those that. Have the yeah. issue. Yeah, no, I mean, I'm just saying that, I mean, yeah. that those would probably be, if I were on a school board or a school, a school superintendent, that would be my first question, how are we going to secure the building? Right, well, Kyle's got 24-hour access there now. Right, yeah. Yeah, if you, you have to have the member and pay for your extra key, yeah, then mm -hmm. you can. Yeah. yeah. So, okay, so movie theater would be it's one thing. Awesome. Is there another kind of low-hanging fruit thing that we think that we could accomplish in the near future? excited about this movie thing first. Oh, I, oh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, is there... Could you just I sort of work on one thing first, first and see how it goes? Maybe. I mean, I, I, we could. I mean, I'm, is there something... Because this is going to involve more than just these people. Right. I mean, you're going to actually... You're, you're creating the idea that you're going to have to create another group to mm -hmm. keep it going. I mean, and it's, I, I personally would like to see maybe something, is there something that we could do that would be visible in town? I mean, something that people could see that happened. I mean, I, one thing that I guess maybe just crossed my mind as I was sitting here, and I, I remember when I was a kid, they had a, like a fire hydrant painting contest. Now, you could, you, you, you could, and I, and I know that, you could paint your fire. I mean, there were mm -hmm. fire hydrants all over town. And they look like little men. They look like dogs. They look like uh -huh. And I mean, I think that you have to have like the color. I mean, you'd have to have the tops color coded for the fire department. I mean, I mean, I'm just thinking of something that. Then a lot of them don't have the poles on them. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm not saying that's it, but I'm yeah. something, something that would, people could see kind of throughout the town and say, oh, this is a, a reminder that oh, something new is happening. New planter boxes. Down. Yeah, down 
street. Doesn't because some community group take care of that already? Uh, the, 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 chamber the, the chamber, the chamber takes care of those. And I think those are owned by the it's businesses business. themselves. And actually, the chamber is talking about um, changing those, those round white. Yeah. Yeah, we're looking at um, maybe doing something a little different on that. Yeah, because those concrete ones are very unattractive. They are very attractive. <laughs> right. um, How do you really feel, Cricket? <laughs> I should not say they're downright ugly. Yeah, <laughs> well, she was way more polite than that. The fire hydrant idea is actually very easy, too, I would think, to get it going and meet it pretty quickly. If you get it and that's the, 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 that still the teenage kids have something to do, too. I, I think they did like that. Some organization or somebody told me their town tried to do that. They, for legal reasons, the city would not let them do that fire department, so that might just be something that... Oh, I, I talked to Adam about that. He said that he thought that the top had to stay a certain color. Is that what it is? Because the top, the color of the top talks about the amount of pressure that's in the fire hydrant. Okay. But the rest of it... The rest of it doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Do you want me to talk to Dale Duncan about it? Sure. Yeah. Dale would do it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, we need to get him involved. I'm, I'm just yeah. thinking that that would yeah. be, you know, I mean... And I'm, and I'm, not, say, I'm not saying that... I think there's one on Robbins that's already painted. It looks like a dog. I mean, there, there are a few of them that are kind of remnants of them, but they, they look yeah. like pretty sad dogs or, you know, I mean, whatever. <laughs> and, I mean, yeah, I, I, I mean I'm, I'm just thinking of something that people could see in the community that would be a, a reminder that something new is happening. And that, you know, get... And I, I'm quite sure that the city would at least provide the primer for them. And, you know, I mean, you'd have to come up with some way that yeah, we don't want them done in watercolor paint or whatever. Yeah. But I mean, you know. Or maybe a sign up so that. I make it a contest. Mm -hmm. Well, would any of that grant money that's about to come? That's, that won't be available for quite some. I mean, I, I don't think it'll be available for. Sometimes we, okay. we, I, don't, we, I don't think we need to, but, but, but that, that's in the future. Yeah. You know. that, that's more in the long range planning kind of thing. I mean, this wouldn't be that, if, uh, the city can, I mean, they need to repaint fire hydrants anyway. So if mm -hmm. they come up with primer, you know, and we get free Paint Iowa, beautiful grants too, I remember. In yeah. 4 there were Those, some things that. Uh, that application deadline passed not too long ago. Okay. I mean, so I mean, um, well, it doesn't mean you can't wait and do it well, next you year. You could wait you next to. year too. I mean, you know, that's. I mean, it's um. I mean, the paint I would beautiful grant. I mean, I'm not saying that, that would be one we'd have to do. I guess I. Know. Mm -hmm. I personally would like to see us do something, you know, that, reaches out to the community, but maybe something also that is visible. So when you. Why, go, why does the city have to take care of the Carlson House? The city's not taking care. Of yes, the they are. House. Are you? No. <laughs> okay. Well, Barb's group is. Well, that was a volunteer yeah. group that um, went and did some work on that. Um, the city is not yeah, taking that's care not of the city. Okay. That the city is not taking care of the Carlson the House and um, let's not go there. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I'd like for that. That was citizens in the community that oh, let's, let's not even weeds let's not stuff. even go there. It was not <laughs> That they trespassed, is it? Yeah. Must not even go there. Um, but anything else you would like to bring up? I guess we should, you know, what, what works for meeting nights for people? I mean, I just kind of. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday nights, somewhere in there, mm -hmm. kind of. Yeah, they're better than the end of the week. I was just yeah. going to say that, you know, if there's a time, usually. Like, like, the, like the second Tuesday's work for people? Mm. As of now, yes. My schedule will change in the fall based on when my kids' activities too. are. Or, yeah. yeah, I mean, and I, I know things will change, and we might have to, you know, okay. adjust. We have to readjust. We we'll, would like a month from tonight work for another meeting? I mean, if we're looking at um, July's. No, that, that, that July 14th would be, I mean, if we're looking at second, if we're looking at second Tuesday, oh, July second 14th. Tuesday, you're right, it'd be July 14th. Yeah. Yeah. 
time. Whoops, for now. Okay. So if we shoot for July 14th at 6.30, here, I mean... Oh, I, I don't think location really matters to no. anyone else. <laughs> I mean, we need to have them someplace where the public can come because they're public meetings, you know. Right. Yeah. Um, I, you know, it seems kind of formal, but we it seems like we kind of broke into just kind of chatting around a table, and that's all right. And um, we can always move chairs so that we're sitting in, in a group more so than you two. We, we can do. That. I mean, so. I like a table to. to I, mean, I tend to be a doodler, uh, and I tend to lean. <laughs> On this chair, you can lean back and take a nap. Any other things people would like to cover? I mean, I, I, I don't want to be drawn forever, but I think we've thrown out a lot of ideas. And that's okay. Mm -hmm. That's a good thing. So we have until the 14th to corner for an essence, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The thing that I was going to say is that as far as communication, because I think that you can accomplish just as much in the off time in between meetings as you can yes. at meetings. So, and I think you do have an email. Just did, Some people hate them. Some people love them. I love group emails. Is there anybody that absolutely despises group emails? No. Nope. Just, okay. Dude, I, do, I don't know what I have. Email address. I've got your email address. You don't have mine. No. What is your email address? Cricket K. C R I C K. E T T K. E T T. At Hotmail. C R I C K E T T K. Yeah. All right. And I know I've got yours. I know I've got yours. Do I have yours, Kim? I, don't I can send it to you. Okay. It's not that hard. It's just K Adams with the school. Of, uh, you know. K Adams at. Uh, Exactly. Yeah. Okay. And uh, I mean, I, I, I agree. Does I, anybody do business by texting either? Or oh, yeah, I can get texts. Yeah. I, I, I like to get text messages actually. <laughs> like the reminder so, pops up that we we're supposed to be here, and I was like, oh, yeah, it's way so better. I don't know. <laughs> that I have phone numbers for everybody. I mean, could um. I mean, I look at mine every two, three days. Oh well, then we're gonna do great, aren't we? As I walk by, I will knock on your door. Okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, um, at least we have. Can I, can I get phone numbers for people? I don't know. What I, I think I've got yours. Yeah, mine, I think. Thought you had mine too. Maybe one nine seven one two six six zero eight four five three. Seven one two six nine three. Four zero two seven. And I'm sure I sure it got yours. Yeah. Uh, Kim, I think. Six six zero zero two seven zero. Okay. Seven one two six six zero eight zero six three for a text. But if you want to talk to me, um, six six two four one four five. Okay. Cool. <laughs> I'd be that struck by it. I would be able to keep track. Yeah. <laughs> right. But that's what I'm saying. If you know, if they talk to the school and you talk to Kyle and we already find out that one place is not any good, then you know, maybe let that know before the yeah. next meeting so that yeah. we need to find other options we can yeah. do that beforehand. So that's the only reason I was going on. Oh no, I agree. I think that we can you know we can we can't really make decisions probably by voting online and stuff, but I mean we can certainly keep others in informed. Anything else that we need to cover tonight? I think I think we've had a really nice discussion. I think it's, I'm, I'm excited because I think that there's a lot of enthusiasm for getting things to improve in town. And, uh, if not, the only other thing that concerns me is with the animals, and I think that's probably something the city has to do. They need to be licensed and proof of rabies. Yeah, the, um, yeah, I mean. Yeah. Are you talking about the dog park idea? No, no. She's talking. She's talking about everybody's 
Right now, there's not a dog licensing program in town. Okay. That and might it, come along with your dog park at some point. Yeah, because they're going to have to have proof of, li of vaccination in order to go to the dog park. So that visitors would be able to use it. Yes, they carry their vaccination with them. Okay. I always have mine. Than I am, because I yeah. just have my dog in my car and I go. If I'm taking it, I mean, I take. Don't they have like little? Yeah, tags? they have they dog tags. Well, yeah. Like Shitsy doesn't because it actually she doesn't weigh enough that she can wear them. Yeah, <laughs> it actually hurts her neck. <laughs> but like my golden, I'll throw him in the car and I'll take him with me to my sister's, and I've left him there and they've taken him to the dog park and never had to have registration for him. But I don't know how that all works. Either. Yeah. Well, and I think maybe that's kind of beyond. I mean that. That, that that gets into that gets into creating new code basically. Yeah, that's why I said it's probably um, up to the city. And I think the logic for not licensing animals, because I've asked about it, has been that it costs more to actually license them than what you ever get in. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. Well, it gives the city a whole other responsibility piece too. That no, it'd be up to the vets. They have to vaccinate the dog because they can't get the dog license until the dog is vaccinated. They can collect the fee at the vet's office. Yeah. And I mean, if it's a neutered or spayed animal, $4 a year. I see the $4 a year doesn't cover the paperwork or the cost of dealing with the license. I was a licensing op officer. I know how much it covers. <laughs> All I know is what I've, what I've yeah. also been told, too. So, I mean, well, and it cuts down on the time of impounds because if the dog's got his tag on, because nobody chips their dog around here, you know, they can identify who the dog belongs to and get it back to them instead of having it go up to the vet and end up being euthanized. Well, that's something the city council will have to yeah. you know, take a look at here soon because that is something that people are talking about now. But, um, one last thing, quick. I just noticed under the low priorities is fire hydrant repair and replacement program, development program, repair, replace two for hydrants per year complete. Does that mean that's already been completed, correct? Yeah. Okay, I want to make sure that wasn't something that we we're going to paint these hydrants this year in three years from now. They're all going to be. Nope. Okay. <laughs> okay, I want it. That was a big surprise. Anyway, that's the only thing. Well, thank you all. Well, that person would just get to repaint theirs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, would, they, would get a, they would get a nice little uh, trial run, like, okay, we screwed up, we get to do it again. Yeah. <laughs> do you have anything else, Georgia, before we take off here? Well, thank you all. Appreciate it. All right. Thank you.